Ooh, that looks tasty. Place your tiles. Create your dice. Move them around. Conquer your foe. Win the game. Welcome, folks. Today, The Hunger Gamer is back with another Kickstarter preview. Today, we are talking about Dittick, a game published by Long Pack Games and created by Dan Browning. Now, this is a game that has already funded on Kickstarter. It came to me, this a prototype, and let me be clear, everything you're seeing here is just prototype version, got to me about two days before the campaign ended. So rather than try to rush something out, I took my time with it and wanted to have it out so it was available for the late pledges. So what Dittick is, is it is a game for two to four people. It is a dice and tile placement game where you are trying to be the first player to get a number six on the board. And I'll show you how that works. Now, before I go any further, please make sure that you have the Klingon subtitles on, because if I make a mistake, that is where you will find the corrections. And if you could not care less about how this game is played, then you're going to want to jump ahead to the timestamp on the screen right now. For those of you that are still here, let's go quickly through how this game works. And I have the game set up here for two players. I have a red and I have blue, and I will just show you pretty much all of the options and how it works. So to start with, you have a bag filled with tiles. These tiles have different colors on them. You'll see in just a minute what they are. Each player has 10 dice, and there is one special action die. On your turn, you will have two actions. You can either draw a tile from the bag and then you place it. And then after you've done that, you get to roll the special action die, or you can move one of your dice that are already out on the board. So clearly I'll just say that red is going first. I'll jump in and we will go ahead and draw a tile from my handy dandy little burlap sack here. So I'll reach in and I will grab one. And you'll see there are two sides and the corners are colored one of the four colors of the dice in the game. And so since I'm red, I don't want to deal with any blue, so I will put this out right here, like so. Then I get to roll my die, but there's not much I can do with it. I got an X, so nothing happens anyway. And then we go to the blue player. They will do the same thing. They will draw a tile, and we'll see we have a lot of red and a little bit of blue here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, and I'm going to place it like so. And then again, I would get to roll the die. And this time I get this symbol, which would allow me to move one die, but I have no dice out. And I promise you're gonna see how that works. We'll go back to red. Red will pull out this one here, and we have a little bit of red, and we will place it right like that, and then roll the die. So there it goes cocked, and we have the X, nothing happens. And we go back to blue. I promise there is more to this game as soon as we get going. And there we have it. So we have this one here, and I will place it just like that. Now we have created our first four corner there. And you'll see we have two red and two blue. So actually nothing would happen, but let's see what happens when we roll our die here. We roll, and so that would move, again, move one die. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is let's just pretend that we had rolled this one instead. And what this allows me to do is this allows me to flip a tile over and then place it back in any orientation that I want. So I will take this one here, I will flip it over to where it's all blue, and I will put it back like that. And now we have three blues and one red in that intersection of four. When there is an intersection of four, a die is created. And now, because there are three blues there, I place a three, just like that. If there's only two blues, I would only place a two. And if I somehow had the majority with only one die, I would place a one. Now we go on back to the red player. Now the red player doesn't have any dice. The red player really doesn't have a choice. It has to draw from the sack. So that's what they'll do. They will draw and they got this one here. And again, they're just doing their best to somehow get to place a die of their own. And they'll do that, and then they will roll the die 
And what they got is they can rotate a tile any direction that they want. Again, just for expediency, I'm going to pretend that I drew this one. And this means I get to draw another tile. So I will go ahead and I will draw another tile here. And I have one that has some red and black or red and two whites. Well, I'm going to go ahead and place it just like that. And now there's a corner of four and red has two of them and the majority. So I will place that just like that. Now things are starting to get interesting. Now I'm going to fast forward a little bit and put some more tiles out so I can show you really how it all works. Now, as I told you at the beginning, the other thing that you can do is you can move your dice. And if you don't draw and place a tile, you can move dice. Now, a couple things to know, if you have a one or a two, then they can move orthogonally or diagonally. Threes have the ability to jump over a die in between, but they move orthogonally. And then fours and fives, all they do is just move one orthogonally. Now, the way that you win this game is, as I said, you have to get a six. Now, what I know you are thinking is, there is no way to start with a six. That is correct. So what you have to do is you have to combine dice of the same number. The only exception to that is you can combine a one and a three to create a four. We're going to go back to my red player and assume that is their turn. So what they are going to do is they are simply going to move a die and they're going to move this one to here because what they're trying to do is they're trying to get those two dice together. Now at the same time, blue is kind of in a bind because blue doesn't have, does not have a one and a three, nor does it have two of the same number together. So blue is really left with no choice but to draw or destroy one of the dice that red has. So the way that works is any die can destroy a one. No problem. It's you just land on it and you take it. A three, four, or a five can destroy a two. A five can destroy a three and fours and fives cannot be destroyed. So blue, what it's going to do is it wants to get rid of this one because it wants to stop that four. So blue is very simply going to move diagonally because ones and twos can move diagonally and will destroy that die. And then it is right there. Now, of course, that puts it in simply an unsafe position because clearly red's just going to do the same thing and then blue's going to do the same thing again. So what red wants to do is try to find a way to mix this up a little bit. And the way that it's able to do that is by using the action die. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw another tile, which is a lovely tile for red, and I will place it right here which gives red another three. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this die. And this is where it gets interesting. So I roll that and all I would get to do is draw another tile. So I will go ahead and do that. And here we go. And so now I'm suddenly getting a lot of dice out here very, very quickly. And then we go over to blue. Blue's gonna go ahead with the plan and try to start eliminating some dice. It's gonna jump right there onto the red die and we're back to red. Well, red again is going to see if it can't get lucky with the bag and the action die. So we're gonna try this again. We will draw and we will go ahead and place right here. And again, that is another die for red. And then we roll the die. And now I get to rotate. And so what's going to happen here is I'm going to get to rotate any one of these tiles. And what's gonna happen is if somehow that changes what color has the majority, a new die will be formed. So I'm gonna slide this over and I'm gonna rotate this one die just like this, assume this one tile just like this, put it on back. And now suddenly there's a majority there that wasn't there before. So I've just created yet another red die. Then we're going to go ahead and we will come to blue and blue is again going to do the same thing. It's going to simply draw a tile and see what we get. And that is a horrible, horrible tile for blue. And it will roll its die. And now I got a move one die. Now, unfortunately for me, there's not 
much that I can do, except in this case, try to run. So I will move that die right there because I don't want to get eaten by this other one. Now it goes to Red's turn, and Red is going to have its chance to combine a die. All you have to do to combine a die is move them on top of each other. Since two should move orthogonally, it'll move to there, and that will upgrade it to a three. Then blue will take its turn, and again, I will just go ahead and just draw a random tile here, which is another horrible one for blue, but I will put that there, and that will turn into a one for blue, and blue will get a chance to roll, and that would be rotate a tile, but let's just pretend, though, that I had rolled this. And what that means is blue gets another die move just like before, but blue's gonna jump there and turn this into a four. And so you see how this works. The only other thing that I need to show you here is there is also the double move, move two dice in any event. So it's fairly simple. You're placing tiles, you're moving dice around, and you're upgrading your dice. And as I said, eventually, if you are very lucky, you will be able to have two fives and move one five on top of the other. And by doing that, you have a six and you have won the game. So that's it. That's how this game works. It's pretty simple. And I even went through several turns there to kind of give you an idea of how it goes. So what do I like about this game? First off, I do like that it is very simple. There's not a lot of rules. It's an interesting abstract game. There's a lot of strategy to this game. At the same time, it's not just simple strategy, it's actually fairly advanced because you have to plan way ahead because you're trying to get all these dice and by combining dice, you lose dice. It's really not easy. I also appreciate how small and portable this game is. Um, as I backed out, you can see, I mean, that's a very, very tiny bit of space. And there, there's a lot of tiles if you take a look. So there's a whole bunch there, but even all of this, if I had all of this out there on the table, it still would not take up that much space. It is highly likely that you could play this game on an airplane trade table. Now that said, if it was, if there's a lot of turbulence, I don't know if I would want to, because these are small little tiles here, but it is possible. It does take up very, very little space. And I will venture to say that I'm guessing everything could fit in this little canvas sack that I have for the game if I wanted to. So I, I like all of that. But what I really think makes this game work is this action die, because it does add a little bit of randomness to the game, but it adds something that I like in games, this element of just hope. When I played this game the other day, it was very clear that I was going to lose. The only way I could win is if I could roll two turns this double. If I could have done it, I could have won. I didn't because I'm bad at games, but it was possible and it added some excitement. It added a little bit of hope to it. Now, you might argue and say, well, that's frustrating. You can lose when you've played a better game. Yeah, fair enough. But for me, that's not really something that concerns me. And I love how deceptively complex these tiles are. There's so many tiles, and just by being able to flip them, turn them, and that creates new dice, there is so much that can happen. It is impossible to predict everything that someone might do. I say that, I'm sure there's somebody could who's much smarter than I am. So I like all of that. I think it's a very clever little game with a lot behind it and a lot of potential replay value. Now, so what are my quibbles about this game? The first one is, while I've already praised how small it is, I'm gonna say how small it is. These tiles are so very tiny. And again, it bears repeating, this is a prototype, so maybe they will be a little bit bigger. But when you get them all out there, suddenly it can feel like if you're trying to rotate a tile into the middle, you're trying to turn it without messing everything up. If you tap it, it's gonna move everywhere. And that can, if be frustrating. And I will also say that there definitely are times when you feel like nothing is happening, especially at the beginning of the game, because you're putting out tiles and trying to get dice. You just put out a tile, put out a tile, put out a tile, and nothing interesting is happening. It does take a little while for it to build up. And I don't know that that is a bad thing, rather than it is what the game is, but that might be something that you want to think about. And I'll also say that 
there are also, in addition to it feels like it takes a little time to build up to a real pace and real speed to the game, there are also definitely times when you're playing that you feel like there is no way this game is ever going to end. And that's only in special cases when you're out there and you know everyone just has a whole bunch of twos on the map and ones and threes and you feel like there's no way I'm ever getting to a six. Now, I will say that this is, is a game that it does say 15 to 60 minutes. And I do think that is probably accurate. I do think you can play this game in as quick as 15 minutes times I've played. It's been maybe 20, 25 minutes. And to be fair, I've only played two player, but I could see it going an hour, especially if you play with more than two players. And if you're getting odd tile draws and people are just eating up each other's dice, nom, 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 nom. It could be something that takes a while. So, so there you have it, folks. That is Dittick. And overall, I think if you miss this Kickstarter and you like abstract puzzle games, then you are disappointed. I think it's really, really clever. It's simple, but kind of like chess is impossible to master. I think this is very simple to learn, simple to play. I can't imagine someone actually mastering this game. I'm sure everyone who's played it is going to tell me, Hungry, you're an idiot. All you have to do is this. But... You know, that, that's where I am with it. So as always, if I made a mistake in the demo at the beginning, please let me know in the comments with the timestamp and I'll get them to the Klingon subtitles. If you look in the description of this video, you will find a link to the late pledges where you can get in on this game. I do think it is a very clever, clever game. And if you are into abstracts, then in tile laying, then th this is a no brainer. As always, thank you so very much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.